Xavier Porter, Brooklyn Fight, shoot the five in the building with the man himself, Max Kellerman. How you feeling today, sir? Good, how are you? All right. So we want to get your thoughts on this upcoming fight that you moderated here at the press conference today for Amir Khan and Terrence Crawford. You said some things up there. You were throwing some darts out there in regards to, like, you know, Khan's chin, um, his heart, you know. Well, he has a great heart. Yeah. No one ever questioned Khan's heart. Yeah. His chin... You know, when, when someone's considered chinny, if they don't have a good chin, yes. what that means is they get hit on the chin. That's all that means. Yeah. No one has a good chin. Mm -hmm. You get hit on the chin, you got to go. <laughs> okay. Um, so then the question, because really it's a question about your defense. Mm -hmm. A lot of fighters who are fast with a jab and they look slick and they have, oh my God, did you see that kind of defensive moves? Nevertheless, have certain basic things that can be exploited in their defense. Mm -hmm. So maybe their head stays in the middle too much when they throw. Maybe they bring back their hand a little lower, bow and arrow it when they jab. Yeah. Whatever it is, other fighters take advantage of that in exchanges especially, um, which is how he got beaten by uh, Garcia. Khan Garcia, who also had a deep amateur background. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's you know muscle memory. It's not like a guy who has to think about what he's doing. It's going to happen automatically. Okay. And Garcia was just about the amateur that Khan was. Mm -hmm. They were similar level amateurs. Yeah, well, he caught Khan in that exchange and hit him on the chin. Yeah. Um, so it's really a question about Khan's defense and also his heart. He has a great heart, but sometimes his heart gets in the way of his head. Mm -hmm. So so he he negates some of his own advantages in hand speed and and and, and uh, reach and those sorts of things and and footwork um, because he wants to fight. Mm -hmm. Now I, I think you know looking at Khan and, and knowing Khan and watching him throughout his career, he matches up very well with Crawford. Would you say? Would it be fair to say? I don't know if anyone matches up well with Crawford. You know, um, the thing about Bud is he can box, he's he can punch, he's ambidextrous and switches up as good as anyone since uh, Marvin Hagler, um, and he's a mean sucker boy. Like the, a lot of a lot of guys who have really good skills don't have the same kind of mean streak that Bud mm. has. Bud has a mean streak in the ring. Do you think that favors him? Oh, yeah. Bud is clearly the, the substantial favorite in this fight. No, I mean the mean streak. Did you think that, like, it favors... Yes. Yes, it yeah. does. Sometimes does. I know what you mean. Like, yeah. The way I said Amir Khan's heart can work against him. Yeah. Does Bud Crawford's mean streak work against exactly. him? Exactly. It works for him. Yeah. His mean streak reminds me of, like, Pernell Whitaker's mean streak. Okay. Pernell was not considered a puncher or anything like that. Was super slick, one of the all-time great defenders. But Pernell, Pernell wanted to hurt you. Yeah. Pernell had a mean streak. He wanted to hurt you. That's why he was a great inside body puncher, you know, a inside fighter and body puncher. And Crawford has that same sort of thing. Can I uh, offer you the other side, which is I've never seen Amir get outboxed um, throughout his whole career. Well, one much. time. I one time. And Peter, what, Peterson nope. lost a split decision? Nope. He got outboxed by Canelo. Early in that fight, hmm. he was outboxing Canelo. Hmm. Don't be fooled into thinking the aggressor is not the boxer. Okay. Bo uh, you ever see, do you ever see uh, Julio Cesar Chavez fight Hector Camacho? I mean, I see, Senior by yeah. Hector Camacho. Camacho went into the fight known as the boxer. Chavez as the brawler. Mm -hmm. But if you watch the fight, what you see is Camacho was the athlete. Chavez was the boxer. You can box a guy very aggressively, cut off the ring, break him down, and knock him out. How do you think someone does that? Just on heart? No. Mm -hmm. It's on skill. You cut off the ring. You slide this way. What it means your footwork is superior, even if your feet aren't faster. You know how to break them down to the body, how mm -hmm. to slip the jab, how to do all those things. So when you watch Canelo Khan, early in the fight, Khan was boxing very well. But that's a little bit front runner stuff. Like if you see, okay. if you see um, you. a chess game, mm -hmm. a chess match between a master and an expert, it's hard to tell them apart early on. Mm -hmm. Over the course of the match, you see where the expert is different. Gotcha. Because everything he does, it's not just perfunctory moves, meaning he does this, I do this, he does this, I do that. It's every move he makes is in service of a strategy. Got you. So tactics and strategy overlap. But tactics are, I do this, he does that, I do this, he does that, I do this, he does that, I win a pawn. Yeah. That's a tactic. Got you. I'm going to move this way and then he'll do this. That's a tactic. Your strategy is, I want to create pressure on the C file to open that up. Okay. Because I think that will win the game for me. Mm -hmm. And then all your tactics are in service of opening up the C file, right? To lock it in. So Canelo was boxing at a higher level than Khan in that fight eventually. Mm. Yes, he had the size advantage, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. And that really decided the fight. But also you could see the way Canelo was deploying that advantage was was uh, by boxing. He was using it in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the service of a boxing strategy. Watch that fight as it progressed. 
Canelo was the one landing the cleaner punches. He was the one who eventually was avoiding Khan's shots and hitting Khan cleanly. He eventually started to outbox him here. Mm. Like towards maybe the sixth or seventh round. I don't remember what round, but like yeah. early on it was Khan's outboxing. Yeah. But really it's because Khan was faster and started fast. Over time, uh, Canelo was not only bigger but more of the master boxer. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, because my art... My- my argument is kind of for this fight, Crawford Khan, is that Crawford's more of a technician. He's more of a guy who, who he picks you apart and then he takes you out. Yep. And being that Khan is so is a good I understand boxer. what you mean. So do you, really, do you think that Crawford's going to be able to pick Khan apart? Yes, I do. Over time. Early in the fight, not as much. Over time, he will. And that's what I mean by the difference between a, 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 a master and an expert. Okay. Crawford's a master and, and Khan is an expert. And that's why Crawford's favorite in the fight. Mm. Um, now... We've seen Khan expose guys who were also could like when you just kind of look at guys quickly, fast fighters with good jabs and seemingly good defense and fast, flashy footwork and everything. You might look at a guy like Amir Khan, a guy like Paulie Malnagi, a guy like Zab Judah. They're all of a type, maybe, right? But when Khan fought those guys, he outboxed them in the middle of the ring. Mm-hmm. He was able to land three punch combinations upstairs mm-hmm. in the middle of the ring against responsible defensive fighters at a distance. Mm-hmm. That's almost impossible to do. That's like hitting the floor to ceiling, man. Right. Try to do it. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, in an actual fight. Like, when you see a, a, a pro box blah, 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 on the floor to ceiling bag and all three land perfectly, you're yeah. like, oh, that looked crisp, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Try to do that against a world-class fighter who's thinking about defense in the middle yeah. of the ring. Hard to do. But they're fast and everything. Khan could do it. So, yes, he is of a certain level because that level was ahead of where Judah or Malinaji were, and that's a good level. Mm-hmm. Crawford's ahead of that level. The reason Crawford hasn't been knocked out like Khan is because for all those, oh my God, did you see that kind of defensive moves that a guy like, say, Zab Judah has? Mm -hmm. Khan had a little bit better basic skills because he was, you know, he was able to outbox Judah. Okay. For all the kind of stuff like that that Khan has, Crawford has a higher level of skill, which is why Crawford doesn't get hit on the button the way Khan does. Clean. Clean on, like... Yeah. As I said, the, the fighters with good chins are the fighters who don't get hit on the chin. Got you. you get hit on the chin, you don't have a good chin. That's, he broke it down right there. Right. So, so, so Crawford's skill, mm-hmm. not the superficial stuff, yeah. not the, the speedy stuff that to the naked eye, but the stuff when you really break it down, who has the better fundamental skill, it's Crawford. Mm. And that's intuitively what people understand, which is why they like him in the fight. Mm-hmm. How do you see this fight favoring out? Like, you know, how playing out, I should say. I mean, time will tell. I expect Khan to have success early. Yeah. And I expect, as the fight progresses, for Crawford to, to separate himself. But we shall see. There are a lot of fighters who have fought um, um, Terrence Crawford. I won't say a lot of fighters, but a few fighters who have fought Terrence Crawford and they had success early. Mm-hmm. So, you, in a sense, you, you think that can, you know, the same There's thing. There's an old expression called class tells over time. Mm. Okay. So why four round fights are dangerous mm. early in a guy's career. Mm-hmm. Ten round fights with good fighters, less dangerous in a sense because they have more time to separate themselves. Mm-hmm. Are you are you happy that this fight happened over? I mean, by dangerous, I mean that you could lose a decision, wind up yeah. with a draw. You see that with good fighters early. Like, he had a draw where in Tijuana against yeah. a guy four rounds. Yeah, because it was a four round fight. A judge was looking this way one round, and he actually won another round, and yeah. also he got a draw. Are you, are you happy that this fight happened over uh, Con Brook? <coughs> over what? Over, over Con, Con Brook. Brook. Well, I'm happy for us because we get Crawford and Con. <laughs> but as a fan. <laughs> Look, I'm always more interested in a Terrence Crawford fight than a Kell Brook fight. Gotcha. Because Crawford's more relevant because he's better. Mm-hmm. Right? But I like Kell Brook fights. Kell Brook, you know, as I, as I said, uh, Kell Brook and Amir Khan are both studies in the old expression, no good deed goes unpunished. They are not as perceived as good as they actually are because they've taken risks in their careers and those risks haven't always panned out for them. So they're a little bit underappreciated. Okay. How do you see Broner and um, Manny Pacquiao fight playing out? Um, if Pacquiao still has anything left, he should beat Broner on activity. He's a more active fighter. And Broner gave up advantages he had when he moved out of 130 in size and punching power. Um, and he gave those advantages up where he could afford to be not a very active fighter, rely on his accuracy, his boxing skills, counterpunching, and his power, and, and, uh, and his reach and stuff at that weight. Now he can't do that. Mm. Now he's running across other world-class fighters, and they're busier. They're working harder. So Ronard has a lot of heart. fights with heart. Um, but 
if Pacquiao still has something left, he should be too busy and at for Rome. Do you think he made the, the the right decision in jumping from I think it was 135 directly to 147 to no, fight Paulie for the belt? Would have been best off staying as light as he could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm good. All right, Thank good. you, man. Appreciate it. Sure. Hey, um, one more thing. You still rapping? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. I, mean, I thought I just was rapping. <laughs> okay.